Okay, um, we're going to call the meeting to order. Um, and then you do the roll call. Okay. I will indeed. So this is Planning Commission of February 12th, 2018. Um, Pozel. Uh, here. Doden. Here. McQueen. Here. Donnell. Here. Also present are Planner Denise Swinger and Village Solicitor Chris Connard. Um, I'm just going to take a second because almost everyone at the table has either not been at the table for this purpose previously or just for a moment. And so if you don't mind just moving down the line from rows on down to give a quick introdu introduction, um, then the massive viewing audience will know <laughs> to whom they are listening. Um, I'm Rose Pelzel. I'm the vice chair as of today, and this is my first time chairing, so sorry. <laughs> uh, I've been on planning commission, I think, like a year and a half, two years maybe, something like that. Yeah, I'm Frank Oden. Uh, this is, I think, my second or third meeting third. planning commission. I started in uh, December. I'm Mary Ann McQueen. I'm Vice President of Village Council and I have a background in housing and this is my first Planning Commission meeting as Council Liaison. Uh, my name is Ted Donnell. Um, I'm leaving the Board of Zoning Appeal and now I'm going to be part of Planning Commission. I was on Board of Zoning Appeal for 15 years, um, local architect and glad to be here. Okay, so now we are going to review the agenda. So um, we'll go over the minutes from last meeting, any communications that um, Denise has for us, um, council report from Marianne, anything that um, pertains to our commission. Then we'll have citizens' comments for anything that's not on the agenda. Um, then public hearings. We have a conditional use application and site plan review and three text amendments and then old business and new business and uh, nomination of chairs. <clears throat> now we are going to review the minutes from the December 11th meeting and we don't have quorum for that meeting, Judy. Okay, How so should we proceed? Yeah, in the event of a lack of quorum, um, if everyone here has read through the minutes, you can move to adopt the minutes, even if you were not at that time a seated member or present for that meeting, as long as you have read them. Um, so a motion to adopt is acceptable. And then we'll approve them next time we have... No, they can be quorum. approved by adopting them. Okay. So that it's, you it's done. done at that point, yep. I move to adopt the Second. minutes in the last meeting, December 11th. Okay, um, I'm going to call a voice vote, Ted. I have to abstain. Okay, uh, Marianne? Yes. Frank? Yes. And myself, yes. <laughs> Rose? So the uh, minutes from December 11th are not approved, they are Adopt. Adopted. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Denise, do we have any communications? No. Okay. Um, Marianne, is there anything at council currently that we should be aware of? Well, as you probably know, uh, we had a housing needs assessment presentation um, about a month ago, I guess. Yeah, about a month ago. And um, since that time, we have uh, the Village Manager Housing Advisory Board, which has been meeting. And what that group is planning right now is four community conversations on housing that'll be uh, near the second half of March, the beginning of April. Uh, we're also going to be looking at possibility of having an inclusionary zoning ordinance. We're just getting some information about that. Um, and so we will be coordinating in some regard with the Planning Commission clearly along the way of this process, which I anticipate will take uh, the, the process of developing a housing policy and plan 
certainly all the rest of this year. Cool. Um, now, uh, citizens' comments for anything that is not on the agenda. Um, please come to the microphone and introduce yourself and keep your comments to three minutes. Okay, hearing none, I'm going to close the citizens' comments. Is that something I do? <laughs> you just did. That's okay. Is that something I need to do? I don't know. Okay, so now a uh, public hearing on the conditional use application and site plan review for um, Jake Brummett has submitted a conditional use application for the purpose of establishing a brew pub at 101 Quarry Street. Um, Denise, can you give a staff report on sure. this? Sure. Um, Jake Brummett, who's here in the audience is the owner of Wander and Wonder at 241 Zena Avenue and he uh, has put a lease in uh, for the building t for this brew pub. He um, intends to call the business to Trail Town Brewery and his plan is to brew 100 to 200 gallons of beer weekly to be, ser to be served on site, um, consumed on site. Um, he also plans to have a restaurant with Mexican themed food. Um, he wants to be open seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, the, the property is an, is an existing grandfathered in um, building. It uh, has a outdoor patio um, and I <coughs> based most of the uh, measurements uh, on the footage for requirements of parking is always going to be difficult to achieve in <coughs> Central business. That's why we have a 25% reduction, and, and planning commission can even go further with that if you want to have them put in some bike racks or anything like that. But you know, the one thing he did point out was the number of seats that were there for um, Williams Eatery was probably 40% um, more than what he's going to have now. So I don't think there'll be as much traffic with that. Um, there's. Uh, Only thing I guess that I, you know, I didn't see any issues with it. I mean, we had talked in length about um, any heat, glare, fumes, no, noise, odor, uh, and he um, was, you know, indicated there would, you know, when he was actually brewing, there might be a caramel-like sweet smell, but it would be indoors and it would be um, dissipated once he's finished brewing, and he would <clears throat> be doing that underneath. Excuse me. Underneath an existing uh, exhaust system that he has um, in the enclosed porch area that's indicated on your site plan, Exhibit D. He intends to do that process twice a week, and he's going to take the spent grains and haul them off site because if they would lay around there too long, then that might create an odor. So he would remove them immediately after brewing. Um, he doesn't anticipate any additional noises from the <clears throat> from the operation of the brew pub. I asked him about the he wants to do an eight by twelve walk-in cooler, um, but it is enclosed in an existing addition on the back side of the property next to Peach's Grill. There's also um, a little private access that takes you back to dumpsters, and that would also be the loading and unloading area for any truck deliveries of products. Um, he doesn't anticipate any, he'll have <coughs> direct cutoff lighting in the back patio area for use uh, during the summer hours, but in the summer it stays pretty light for quite a while, so um, there's not going to be any additional impervious surfaces added either, <coughs> so for any stormwater runoff. I have talked with um, our water and sewer um, superintendent, and um, unless he's going to be doing something a little bit bigger than of an operation, he didn't anticipate any issues with what was existing. I think that pretty much covers that part of it. Um, 
Do we want to have a discussion up here before we bring the applicant up to ask questions or can you come up? Do you want to say anything? Uh, just, I'm Jake Brummett. I, uh, like she said, I've had Wander and Wonder down uh, 241 where Oats used to be. Been there for uh, a little over eight months now. Um, just looking to kind of grow and, and uh, prior to having that store, I actually brewed in Centerville, Ohio for three years. So I do have experience on the brewing, which is going to be very small. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, obviously compete with Yellow Springs, just kind of be a, a secondary little thing. Um, I don't even know what size they have. They have like a 17 or 20 barrel brewing system, and mine's going to be a two or three barrel, which means 100 to 200 at a time. Um, well, 60 to 100 and 60 to 100 at a time, and twice a week. Um, the grains, I know that, you know, at lock 27, we kept the grains out back behind the shopping center in the summer waiting for the farmer to come pick it up to give to his livestock. And if it sat out there, it would get pretty rank. Um, but I told her, since it's only going to be two or 300 pounds at a time, that when I'm done with my day, I'll just load it up and I'm going to try to find a local farmer, pigs and cows or something that'll want to you know, it's spent grain. It doesn't have a whole lot of nutritional value for, for most you know most things. But they'll eat it, and it's sweet. It's kind of like a treat for them. Um, so I'll be taking care of that, so there won't be any smells, abnormal smells coming out of there. And like she said, that a little over half of the one room that he had seating in for the restaurant will be taken up by my actual brewing house, brew house. So there's going to be less seating in there than there was before. So. So we weren't an anticipating like trying to have a whole bunch more people in there. Um, but other than that, any, any questions? Yeah, I, I just have a couple of questions about the odor. Mm -hmm. um, so I, there were just a couple things that concerned me. So you'll smell the odor in the building. Is that right? When when you're brewing? When I'm actually brewing, uh, there's a vent that there's a there's a fan, exhaust fan right on the wall facing the parking lot of this of the property and when i'm brewing it'll be there'll be there'll be steam you know from 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 the from being from being boiled and i'll boil for 90 minutes so for 90 minutes i'll have that fan on and it'll pull the steam out so it doesn't all stay in the in the so, building so how much do you anticipate much odor outside from not very much like i said it'll just be a little bit of uh, like the sugary water that I'm pulling out of the uh -huh. grains and then some addition of hops and during were, the boil. I'm sorry. You were contrasting the amount you're doing to the Yellow Spring Brewery. What what is about ten percent? Oh not even that. Okay. I mean it's a tiny amount. I I don't plan on uh, okay. distribution, canning, bottling any I just wanna serve what I make. I, I, I was asking because of the odor because I know sometimes they they can smell the odor there, yeah. but that would probably be so Yellow Spring this is a representative of the brewery. Yellow Spring Brewery just, is a 15-barrel uh, system. 15? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Ten, ten times the size. Yeah, mine's going to be two or three barrel at a time. And, and just, uh, I appreciate that you're going to get the, the waste products the off the site. Yeah. And there is a local uh, farm organization that might take it if you can't find a place. Right, right. Uh, Agraria might be interested in taking it, so you could give him that mm -hmm. information if he wants it. It's just okay. outside of town. All right. Um, yeah, I have a question. Have you been to the health department and the build, the county building department yet? We have been. We've been to. We've contacted uh, Green County Combined Health, and they're going to come and walk through Thursday. Thursday? Tuesday. 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 No, no, no. Thursday. Right. Thursday. Thursday. Yes, this week on Thursday. To make sure that uh, tell us what we need to do to the, get the kitchen and everything up to up to snuff. Um, and then the actual brewery part is once I get once we get the the, the food permit, and then, well, not when we get the food permit, but after this meeting, when I know because I didn't want to just mail off money to the state, you know, hoping to get back someday. Um, as soon as we find out, then I will apply for the, the the actual brewing license, manufacturing license, and then they will come and do. Uh, a first run through, and they'll tell me what I need to do to, to, to meet their standards, and then I will do it. And then I go when I get done with what they tell me, they'll come back and do a final. And then once I get that final, then they will they will mail me the 
the permit to actually start manufacturing. Well, the Green County requires that you get an occupancy permit for that change of use. And I caution you because the the temporary structure, which is the greenhouse structure, is well, temporary. Right. And if you change the use of that temporary structure, which you are doing by putting a brew station in it, they'll more than likely tell you to remove it. And that's called an occupancy change? It's an, yes. You're, okay. See, if you went in and took the building as it is, you're, you're not changing occupancy or use, but you would still have to re apply for an occupancy permit because it's a new tenant. Mm -hmm. But, you know, after that, you still have to go and get an occupancy permit through the county. Okay. And that's Green County. So I want to pick up on what you were saying. <clears throat> so, well, if I heard you correctly, you're saying that because the what do you call that structure? The, it's a greenhouse. The, the, okay, the greenhouse right. is a temporary structure. You're concerned that he might not be able to do the brewing there. That seems like what you're saying. So if he were to do, I, I mean, this is of course up to him, you, but if he were to do the brewing in the existing building with that? What? Well, it's a, you have a residence above that portion. So the fire, separation between again changing that use group from a dining area into what's called an F1 which is literally manufacturing alcohol products um, changes that use and you know Al Kuzma was great to go down and talk to the head building inspector the, mm -hmm. you know but I would do that immediately um, okay. because there's just a whole lot of things that the Ohio Building Code has impact on the building and so before you get too far down the road. Yeah. What makes that secondary building considered a temporary? It's a greenhouse. It doesn't have a foundation. It doesn't have a roof. It doesn't apply to wind load, snow load, even though it's been there for 30 years. Yeah. I mean, it does have a foundation, and the walls are wood. Well, trust me. So I don't know. But the, but the roof a is a, uh, a, it's not a, it's got like that. It doesn't have an scaffolding. insulated foundation, you know, that, I mean, it doesn't comply to energy code, it doesn't apply, comply to any kind of structural code. Okay. I mean, it just doesn't. And it's been grandfathered in since it was Carol's Kitchen. Right, right. <clears throat> so, you know, every time somebody goes in, the county has said something about it, but because it's been grandfathered, they can't insist that it be torn down. Right. But they were trying to get them to tear it down 20 years ago. But it's been only used as a dining area yeah. thus far. I know, yeah, I know Williams put in a, a, I mean, they redid the whole thing when he moved in there. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if it, if it, it'll meet certain things now or not. Uh, only if, it grand, if it's grandfathered. Right? Yeah. Al yeah, Kuzma that. will be able to answer oh, his yeah. questions. Who, who's that? Al Kuzma, the mm -hmm. building of. He's the chief plans examiner, building yeah. inspector for, okay. for Green County. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, and I mean, I you know, I can tell you, I'm in full support. You know, but I don't like to see anybody run down the road too far. Right, right. Yeah, I know. With the health department and yeah. you know, investing monies into a space that just could get some red flags thrown up, make sure that he's okay with it, because you'll have to eventually. Ted, would you would you assume that this would be something that the property owner is aware of? I don't want to say. That, you know, I mean, that's outside of my... Yeah. I just didn't know if the property owner is, has changed in recent years um, from me. Uh, uh, no, she's had it, I think, for as long as it was Williams. I don't know how long before that. Okay. So she's had that property at least 10 years because okay. he's been there. He was there 10 years. You might ask her what she knows about that building as well. Because I think what you, you understand, if it was, if it would have continued as a restaurant, then there was no right. change of use. But since I'm actually going to want to manufacture in that room, that might change the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to make sure we find that out. <laughs> yeah, which isn't something that you know we typically would know. I mean, right. it's yeah. fortunate that he happened to have that history. <laughs> Super fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, to approve this, we need to figure out parking, right? To a point, I, th I think that, you know, 
I think we can be pretty generous with what with, with considering the fact that what has been grandfathered in before um, had a lot more seating than what he's proposing. What? Um, so it, it needs one truck loading space. It needs the truck how many? It has that. Yeah. And then it needs. <clears throat> Can I recommend that we hear from other folks and then oh. close the public hearing and then debate yeah. amongst ourselves? Okay. Um, sure. Okay. So um, I'm going to open up the public hearing on the conditional use application for Williams. So you can sit down. Um, uh, citizens are, you know, don't. You're not addressing the applicant, you're addressing the board. So, opening the public hearing now. Yeah, and you have three minutes to, yeah. to speak. And they should come up and talk into the microphone. Yes, and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Laura Habercoss, and my husband, Umberto Nieto, and I have the Flying Pepper food truck. Um, we're regulars frequently at the Yellow Springs Brewery and uh, they have some products we're wildly <laughs> in love with. Um, we would love to be able to serve food at that Williams, at the old Williams location. We actually looked at the building and it was already leased and that's when we found out that Jake had already leased the building and so that's how we connected. Um, we right now in Logan County use thousands and thousands of pounds from the local farmers market vendors. That's something we'll continue to do and then any of the areas that we work in we also try to incorporate the local products because that's the way we do things, fresh and local in, when it's in season. So if this works out, that would be really neat and we'll be really happy to be part of the community because it's something we've been looking at for a while. The housing is a little out of our reach, so maybe this will be a way we can do it. And uh, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Karen Wintrow. I'm the director of the Yellow Springs Chamber, and um, I would encourage uh, Planning Commission to look favorably on this uh, request. Um, it's obviously a uh, replacing a restaurant that was there that that left. Um, we it, it was a popular restaurant, so we need to fill that space. It brings another layer of. Um, something, we, we do have Yellow Springs Brewery, but as Jake said, this is a little bit of a different thrust. I think, um, I, love, I love the name, I love Trail Town Brewing, and, and I think it will, it will just be another stop that people will have. Um, I think parking won't be an issue. I mean, we know the parking that, was, that Williams used certainly um, uh, could potentially be less, and I think people, people easily find a way to park, a place to park downtown. Um, I love um, the painted pepper. They actually reached out to me, so I was very uh, impressed by their the fact that they were being so assertive and so interested in locating in Yellow Springs. So that shows their commitment, and we all do love them at uh, when they're at the brewery. Um, and and just a bit about Jake, his he, when he came to Yellow Springs to open Wander and Wonder uh, eight months ago, he's he quickly jumped in, joined the chamber. He's very um, positive, active business owner, uh, really looking to be creative and innovative in his, in his retail business. So I think he'll do the same. I expect he'll do the same with this business. So um, I certainly support it, and uh, I think the community will support it also. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Anyone else? All right. Close the public hearing. I'm going to close the public hearing now um, and bring it back up to us. What would we like to do? Well, I have a question for Denise, I yes. guess. Do you know whether there were any, ever any complaints about parking because of Williams? No. <coughs> no. <clears throat> well, I, I guess I would be in favor of saying I mean, 
I don't need to try and figure out all of the parking <coughs> things. Just speaking for me personally, given that we had restaurants there for a couple decades. I guess I'm just curious as to the language of what we would approve. Do we need to address the parking at all, or do we just approve if you don't it? Feel that you know that it's that the parking that's um, at the uh, that's on the street and what's available in the lot across, and the six spaces he has on his property is sufficient. Okay, that's, then that'll be fun. Do you happen to have park uh, bicycle racks? There too. I don't, but I can I can do that no problem. Uh, especially uh, on the on the same side as the patio, we would easily put some in there. Okay. And then I did have a question about the handicap. Can you come up? I did have a question about the handicap. Do you have the Do you have the requirement for that so I can make sure I get them marked off? I can get that information. Okay. I don't have it. Yeah. Right, because definitely want to mark those off in that. That parking lot's kind of hard to get in and out of. It's not a very big parking lot, so just I want to make sure we have those marked clearly so they're open when, when people need them. Okay. Thanks. Well, I would like, you know, I would say that first off, this is a permitted use with conditions. So, you know, the Central Business District actually encourages your types of establishments within it. Um, planning Commission's role on this particular thing is simply to make sure that the citizens are heard, that issues that may have been coming up before are addressed, um, but you're permitted use with conditions. You know, my only condition that I would put on the table is that you do, in fact, get an occupancy permit through the county uh, and the health department as just a check mark for Denny's um, when it all kicks in. You know, when you open the doors, you got to have that occupancy permit. Right? But I'm certainly in favor. You said get occupancy permit from the health department? But well, no, the, the health department, department signs off on um, the food. Uh, you're right. So, so the occupancy permits from the, For the building. building. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a motion you want to make? Um, I was waiting for Frank or oh. anything. Oh, no, I was just going to ask you know, the only. As far as the, that's completely up to Green County building to determine whether or not they'd be able to use it. That's nothing that ultimately we would have a say. No, you know, we're right. Yeah. right. Now we, yeah. we, the village has to issue a zoning permit before the county will even entertain a, a building permit and therefore an occupancy permit application. So we have to do our due diligence. Um, we can send that, you know, Denise sends any zoning application to the county so they have it on record when you go and, you know, then it's just sitting down and discussing with them what requirements they're going to make you do and what you're doing and go from there. Can you move your microphone closer oh, to you? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about Thanks, that. Thanks, Spencer. But I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, application for conditional use with the conditions that the applicant uh, obtains his health department permit and his building um, occupancy permit. And, and bicycle racks? Do you want to put that in? Bicycle racks, yeah, I would say. Do we have a second? A second. So I'm going to just read that motion yes, back. Do. Um, so you're moving approval of the conditional use application with the condition that the applicant um, obtain uh, an occupancy permit through Green County Building Department and obtain health department approval. Um, and you would like to see the inclusion of bike racks. Does, does the motion need to say anything about um, Existing parking availability is sufficient, Denise. Or is yeah, that yeah, assumed? Uh, yeah, we can. I could say. Yeah, you might want to say that. Okay, so so you're going to obtain health department and occupancy permits. Um, Planning Commission deems the existing parking availability acceptable with the inclusion of bike racks. Is that all right, Ted? That good. That's good. Marianne. Yeah. Let's see you guys. You good? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and roll call that okay. just for uh, please do. 
such purposes. Yes. All right, McQueen. Yes. Donnell. Yes. Doden. Yes. Pelzel. Yes. Right. Okay. I I've got one more, and that is just on, was everyone acceptable with the hours of operation? It was 11 to 10? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a good balance. It doesn't compete maybe with some of the other bars that are a little bit different. They get out a little later. I'd like to see another late night establishment, but <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm awake, but. <laughs> <laughs> and Denise, that's in. We're covered there in the approving it as requested. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, now we move on to our next agenda item. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Can you give Bye. me one. Jake, you want to give me a call tomorrow and give you the information that who to call, who to call and. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. One, two. Oh, thank you, guys. You can stay. Thank You're not you. required yeah, to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes the <laughs> Okay. Next on the agenda, Judy, you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Okay. Yes. Um, Denise, you want to talk about how oh. we're going to go about this? Well. Um, <clears throat> I'll just give a little proof for it, and then you're going to have to vote on each one separate, if okay. you agree. Um, in December, when um, the Wise Brewery was here um, for their conditional use hearing, um, we discussed the fact that there wasn't any allowance for food trucks in B2. And I said I would do some research on that and get back with you because I, w I wasn't sure if it was just something that had was omitted, which we've had that found before in the code. Um, or if there was a, if it was purposely uh, taken out. And then I did find that documentation that indicated that there was a meeting uh, with uh, the zoning code person, um, the consultant, along with um, then village manager Laura Curlis and, and board member Karen Wintrow, and that section was removed. Um, I contacted um, Karen and asked her if she had any recollection as to why that was, and I did put that in the report. She indicated that perhaps it was because um, there might have been a perceived competition with the downtown. I found, I think she found it a little odd, and, and especially now with what YS Brewery's planning to do. Um, to me, if you were going to not want to compete with the downtown, then why would you allow food trucks in the downtown where the restaurants are? So this is in a different location where there is much more of a food desert <laughs> of choices than there are in B1. So I am proposing that uh, Planning Commission consider this and allow us to put that into B2. That would put it into the industrial zones, the business, and the um, educational. And they would not be allowed in conservation or in residential. You know, I can add to a little history there. Um, during the zoning code rewrite, we did actually talk about food trucks, but food trucks weren't popular. You know, I mean, they were just starting to come around, and, you know, it, it wasn't vogue at all. You know, food trucks were like Johnson's food truck if you go to a construction site and get them at lunch. You know, that was the extent of it. Um, so I think that, you know, as the, as the trends change, you know, now is a great time to add this to the other districts. Obviously, food trucks are doing well in town. Um, there's no reason to stop that. You know, people enjoy it. They stay in town, you know, because there's more variety. So, you know, I like it. Certainly in favor of it. So, are we adding it to B2 and to yes, industrial? So no, it's no, already, it's already, it was already it's, conditional. Yeah, it's all, okay. yeah. It only needs to be added to B2. And there's three places where this needs to happen um, it's in uh, Chapter 1250. Table 12502, Schedule of Uses Business Districts, and that would be adding um, food trucks as a conditional use, 
see on the back of that page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mobile vending food trucks. And then, and then the second one that you'd have to vote on separately and have a public hearing op open for is Chapter 1258, Scheduled District Uses, adding food trucks again to B2. And then um, the last one is Chapter 1262.08 under conditional use requirements for mobile vending food trucks putting the, that they're permitted to operate within B2. Is this three separate public hearings? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so um, how do I go about this? So you want to open a public hearing for each of them. Okay. Take any comments from anyone. Close that public hearing. Take a vote. You just do that. Do we do the motion with first? Each, with each one. Motion do we do the motion? Way. Yeah, that's... <clears throat> no. Normally, you okay. do the motion after you've heard okay. the from the people. Sometimes you change the motion based on the input that you're getting. All right. So, yeah, that's usually why you hold that. Okay. Um, I'm going to open a public hearing for text amendment table 1250.02, schedule of uses, business districts, adding mo mobile vending food trucks to B2. Um, any comments? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and bring it back to us. Good with me. Oh, I need a motion. I, I move that uh, we adopt, that we make the changes as per the agenda regarding public use, I mean regarding conditional use for food trucks in the Yes. yes. Yeah, B2. I'll second that. So. We're just voting out this first of the three. Yeah. Yes. Right. Correct. Okay, so that, that's a simple motion to approve the addition of mobile uh, vending food trucks to table 1250.02. Um, and I'll go ahead and call the roll on that. Danelle? Yes. Doden? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Pelzel? Yes. Okay, next I'm going to. Um, open a public hearing for the text amendment table 1258.01 schedule of uses by district adding mobile vending food trucks to B2 general business district. Um, I just opened the public hearing. Any comments? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, any discussion? Do I hear a motion? Uh, okay, I will move that um, <laughs> we add the um, uh, food trucks to B2 under schedule of uses by district. Do I hear a second? Sounds. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll go ahead and call the roll on that. McQueen? Yes. Doden? Yes. Danelle? Yes. So. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to... I have to a procedural question yes. here real quick that just, as we go through this, it's striking me. Um, and Chris, you can help with this. If It seems to me that if we have a text amend amendment in the code, that it's a single document, and the text all relate to one topic, if we have public hearings for each one of these three things, we could have opposition in public debate about one of those conditions which may in fact destroy the other two if the planning board decides that that one is improper or whatever. So couldn't we include these as a single with three text amendments? Uh, under the circumstances given the substantial relationship and how you read the entire code, I wouldn't have a problem with it in the manner that you propose. Okay. I mean, I don't think we should change it now, but it yeah. was, you know, it's kind of opens up a door I don't know that we'd want to open up. <laughs> I think it's a fair comment. I think you, you have to take each scenario as it comes forward, but in the context of this one, particularly because it's, it's functionally, it's a single topic, really, yes. because it pertains to a text amendment related to B2. Yes. That is a single topic. If we were looking at multiple districts and right. more tweaks, then I think we might all these tables to have, have to be changed. Out. They, they have to be consistent yeah. with one another. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but I am going to open a public hearing <laughs> for text amendment <laughs> chapter 1262.08 uh, um, adding mobile vending food trucks to B2 for the D1. <laughs> Don't vote against this one. <laughs> um, Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> uh, any comments from the public? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, any discussion, motions? Oh, motion to approve is written. Second. All right, and roll call is Doden. Yes. Pelzell. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Donnell. Yes. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to old business. Um, uh, we're going to talk about the comprehensive land use plan. Denise, do you want to talk about why this is on the agenda and what you? What your th thoughts are? Uh, yeah, um, everybody got a copy of the Comprehensive Land Use Plan, which was last <laughs> done in 2010, and I know we put this on the agenda before. That's why it keeps going under old business. But I'm not sure. Um, it's if you add all of the attachments that with that go with this document, it's pretty extensive. But it's also very outdated, um, and I know that there's more things coming up with the complete streets policy that they'd like that, that the council would not only like to see incorporated into our you know plan the comprehensive land use plan but we also need to look at this that in our planning and zoning and code and see if there's text amendments that need to be made uh, to um, add that language but <laughs> I think that if anybody has any thoughts on is there a way that we could do this where if we want to do it in a subcommittee of or if it's just updating or uh, in the past the last time this was done it was done by the village manager in 2010 um, he brought it to planning commission somewhat and, and to council you said there was also a consultant involved at one point at that point, the village was contracted with a, with uh, an individual from Wolpert, so there was a professional planner who was assigned to the village, basically. And I think uh, Mark Cundiff worked with him to some extent, but he, he primarily wrote the document. Mark Cundiff primarily wrote the document. I think that there are so many things happening with what, where we're going if we could get any extra help somehow with this I, I mean there's a, a basic level of it that we can do but but incorporating all of the other things that we want to add to it we might I don't know if we want to really have a great document that can carry us over for another lengthy time period I am in favor of a sub committee well, I, you know, I don't know. I think that um, the last planning commission rewrite that I was involved in was not just the one with Mark, but the one before that. And their methodology, I thought, was pretty good. You know, and that was every every month you meet, you pick a certain group of sections that you plan on and um, going over in planning commission in that next meeting. You know, so you kind of just peck away at it over the course of the year. Um, and I think that that, in particular, I think that that's a good approach. Um, particularly with the existing document. Yeah. yeah. You know, and if you read through it, you know, I mean, I've been involved in the planning commission and zoning process for a long time. And I think that the comprehensive plan was 50 years ago, it was way ahead of its time. And it's still ahead of its time, even though it hasn't changed in substance. And I think that the values of the community are still written in it. I think that the way that the community has grown and the fabric that it's, it is today is very similar to the way that our forefathers thought that it should be. Um, so I don't see any substantive changes to the comprehensive plan. However, the, the amendment documents are significantly different. You know, and I know that we had the bicycle enhancement you know, documents in there. Those kind of get morphed into the complete streets project that we right, have now. Right. Um, but they're very similar. Um, you know, they're different in context, but they're really very similar. 
Um, you know, and it goes on and on. The, the housing survey backs up a lot of the things that are in the comprehensive plan, but the data is different right. because demographics are different today. Those are those are going to take some pretty good discussions, um, but we should be waiting on some input, and it probably will take that long for us to get there. But it, you know, waiting until council is done with the you know housing assessment group and you know whatever comes out of that and then morph that into it you know at that time while it's fresh you know while we're in the process it would roll right in that could be incorporated in yeah yeah i started reading it i'm on page 21 <laughs> of, of the 34 pages which does not count all the attachments but it's it, some of it um and so far uh, to page 21, it's not too technical. It seems like it gets more technical in terms of like mm. street sizes. But at any rate, some of it seems fine, and other of it is dated. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, initially, I was thinking if we all had electronic, or maybe a start off with one or two people look at it and just note needs updated. It's okay. Just sort of go through to sort of get it started. Well, I, you know, I think that part of the reason I like Planning Commission doing it as a whole is because it gives us all homework assignments, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, we're all on the same page of where that document stands and what needs to be done. I think a subgroup is, you know, if it was, if there were more changes, I would agree. Uh, yeah, you know, I wasn't I, uh, necessarily meaning that we didn't all look at it, but that maybe a couple of people might look at it just sort of go through and then sort of come back and say, well, if we're doing it a section at a time, we can all go through that section and make all of the notes that we need. I like thinking of it in smaller. We're not going to be able to do the whole thing in even three me meetings, oh, no. right? Um, that would take a lot of time, and we have other things to do as well. I, I'm in favor of that. Of like. <coughs> Of breaking it down breaking into it down. sections. Okay. You know, the other thing I like about that is it gives the public an opportunity to stay engaged in updating something that a lot of people don't even know exists. Well, yeah. you know? and we use it pretty much every single staff report, every single line yes. item goes through the comprehensive land use plan and takes, you know, the main items from it and applies it and looks at everything through that lens. I think, you know, it's it needs to be updated, but it's a great tool. Yeah. It is. Well, it's a it's the policy document for anybody who is looking to develop in town. Yeah. That's the first document that they go to and that the village has to stand put their feet <laughs> on the ground and say, you know, this is in fact our values here and this is what we expect if you're looking yeah. to develop land in our community. Um, you know, and planning commission uses it a little differently as, say, council council drives the the policies, but planning commission's job is to uphold those policies. And um, so, you know, I think it's for us. It is our guiding. Well, would we document. be able to add like and add more to this with um, with the fact that um, you know we are talking about at, about developing the glass farm and maybe have that be a component of it, and then. The, that there are other properties that we've identified and yeah know. there's a you know council had uh, Roach LaRoche um, do a, a quick little master plan of the thoroughfare you know how it linked in with the wetland of the glass farm you know you adopted that didn't you? Oh, you, you didn't are you talking about what uh, Ken LeBlanc, LeBlanc. Ken LeBlanc did. yeah we haven't adopted it I mean, that would be quick enough to probably do, or we could even look at that and send it to council to adopt. But that's a that's a starting point. I'm not saying that's a fine, that's just a concept plan. But what it does is it gets the utility, the extension, the connectors, the roads where utilities are coming from. It at least puts that into the picture of something that Johnny can, can start and the village manager can start thinking about in capital improvements. You know, and then as things evolve, we just refer to that. And then, as it, you know, we can add to that. I, I'm, I'm confused, though. How, how is the glass farm going to be added to the? 
Well, I think it's added by well, it's, it's LeBlanc plant. Well, it's comprehensive land use plan, so okay. it's supposed to be all encompassing, and the, it's not in there now because for some reason that northwest area has always not nobody's touched it. So now that we are looking at doing something there, it might be good to go ahead and at least have that be in the plan. Well, f at least talk about it. Yeah. yeah. If it's in the plan, then 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 it's a plan that you're working towards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so think that. can we get copies of, I don't know, like the last two comprehensive land use plans as like background? Um, I'd, I'd like to see how a document has changed over time um, to think about how it's needing to change in the future. I'd like that personally. And, and you know, I welcome anybody that has like a, an hour or two that wants to come in and read. Some of the old ones, yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to. How things have changed and how how we thought about land development over the years, depending on exterior forces that, or threats. It was interesting. So we could get electronic copies of. I, I, don't, I mean, they would really have to be scanned in. Past we, yeah, we would have to scan those in, wouldn't we? So it's. I mean. It, it's possible some of them are very crumbling. We'd have to be very careful with them. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about just a separate electronic copy of the current plan. Yeah. You do have it in your packet. Well, I know, but I... I she wants it electronically as a separate document. The comprehensive and she wants it separately in a separate PDF. And it, Yeah, and it is yeah. on the website, I believe. But with yes, with the separate. attachments. Yeah, with the attachments. Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask if the appendix are they available in a box? How are they stored? And they're where are in they? they're in a they're in a file. It, yeah, it's can we have that available? I mean, I can't expect that you would want to reproduce those, but you know, I certainly would like to come in and take a look at them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then maybe as we do our little agenda, have those available those particular document yeah. documents available. For at the least topic I, we know. could like take pictures yeah. of them and stitch <laughs> yeah. them together. Because uh, I I remember yeah. when. I mean, she had pot, piles and piles of different urban service map areas and different things like mm -hmm. that. So are yeah. we thinking of this complete streets policy together with this? Yeah, oh, yes. yeah, okay. I think, I think, that will have to be I think whether, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah and also, I thought council wanted, correct me if I'm wrong, to, uh, for us to look at how to incorporate some of those policies into our planning code because we have a subdivision code that says you know three foot sidewalks and right that's all going to have to be updated yeah well and i think that that's a, a natural progression if we go through the comprehensive plan rewrite and there is a particular topic that is contrary to the zoning code you know we bring that up we have a list and then we start you know going, going through, through new text amendments, amendments again yeah. you know and that's our job Really, yeah. and it comes down to it. Yeah, yeah. And it's really, you know, I mean, I'm tickled to death with how good the the process is now. You know, it's definitely a better code than it was. You know, yeah. it's. And I, you know, and the pocket neighborhood development was a big process, but we just whittled away at it. Yeah. Every month that we could, just whittled away at it, and finally ended up with something good. So, all right, I will. Get something together and maybe um, for the next meeting have uh, maybe just we'll just take one section of it. And, okay. Well, I would suggest that <clears throat> we all get a chance to look at the okay. appendix documents yeah. Yeah, right. and then come back with any, you know, in the first meeting, just hit the introduction and talk about what those documents are and whether we want to what we want to include what we yeah. don't want to include yeah or we yeah. might morph into an update yeah. with new documents okay and i even think uh this might be approaching it as a person who teaches writing <laughs> uh you know anytime a group of people are working on revising a major document like this i think spending some time at our next meeting just deciding how to break the task up yeah yeah uh, and if we can all think about that before the next next time we meet so we yeah. can have that discussion about 
what seems to be the logical ways to take this and divide it up yeah. into manageable chunks yeah. for the future yeah. would be helpful. Because I have no interest in having our whole group sit around and talk about how some particular sentence should be moved. I mean, I'd much rather have one or two people come with some suggestions and then bring it back to the yeah. as to us spending an hour making ones. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, in this case, you do have, I, I don't want to throw it on to Denise, but if you, if this body is making the decision about um, what appendices to include, not include, um, how you want each section to look or be rewritten, you know, you have Denise's fully capable of wordsmithing that at at the point that you make those those decisions. If Denise is not, yeah. that might be the time for the subcommittee. And, to, and honestly, to it may be better to have more of those documents integrated that rather than having all these appendixes because then I think people don't oh, really yeah. get to, they won't read the appendixes yeah. and right. yet there's valuable stuff in there that should just be in. Yeah. Particularly it's maps. Yeah, and, what's yeah. included you know, and what's not. that go yeah. along with all the words, you know, I yeah. mean, it's, the maps, well, I'd like graphs, this to be something things that's like really, that really go on the with. end result be really good and really good quality and something that can carry us forward. So what, do we want a, a time, do we want to set a time that we can come and look at all those appendixes that's well, not an open meeting? Is that what's happening? Why don't I figure that part out? Okay. Why don't I figure out how much and can get scanned and email and how much us. can be available? Okay. And as much as can be made available to you electronically, I will do that. If we have documents that look like they're too compromised to scan, um, I'll let you know that. We'll see if we can just hand copy and make those available. So I'll, I'll work with Denise and then let everybody know All right. what's available, where it's like a plan. And then this week, yeah. Yeah. next meeting, we'll come yeah. back to this having fully read the document and talk about how to break it up. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Cool. Determining a plan forward. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. On to new business? Um, yep. Um, and the annual report yes. to council? Yep. So this is a draft I did of an annual report to council. Um, yeah, we're including that in the uh, comprehensive land use plan discussion. The uh, Planning Commission gives a report to Council uh, and should be doing that in Friday, later in March, not, I'll be going to be here for the We didn't talk about March. complete street. I, I thought we, I'm sorry, oh, I thought we, we gonna, addressed the, are we gonna just, part of the, that was my question, are we, are we talking about the complete streets um, with the comprehensive land use that's, plan? Yeah, that's what I'm okay. saying. Yeah. And the I'd impact on the zoning code and, and everything, yeah. that's, yeah, that's included. At it's, this point, we can think of it as, a, as an addendum for it's the a new, it's a new land use plan. Along yeah. with the housing needs assessment, but we're, there's, that's still being looked at. Right. Okay. So I have a one, I got to make one amendment to a person that served on planning commission. Um, that had resigned. That was Krista Bukin. I'm going to add that. And and Judith was the council alternate, not me. That's not it. Oh, sorry about that. Has Adam been off for that long? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. She. What happened was she'd already like updated some of this stuff when I went back and asked her for it. Okay. Um, so. Was Adam at all in 2017? On the, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was not very much, very well into 2017. I'd have to go back and look at um, meeting minutes to find out when that was. And who would have who would have replaced him? I think Frank did. Was it Frank? Because he was gone for a while. Okay. Well, we'll fix that. We'll look at that. Wait, Maybe no. We'll there was another. We'll there was that. a woman who was an alternate. What well, no. Chris Rubin yeah, stepped Buchan. in repeatedly because he he missed some of Yeah. Chris, yeah. So. Yeah. She pretty much so all Rubin. year was here. I don't remember him. She should be listening. So yeah, she's not yeah, on that's this what list. Denise is saying. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. And then. Um, 
So I just gave a little overview of what Planning Commission did in 2017, what BZA did, and then broke down the number of zoning permits issued in the zoning office. I also had my hand in violations. And then meetings that were attended for a variety of things. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting was um, the number of uh, scheduled appointments that I had with people. With residents, I had 14 scheduled appointments, but I probably, oh my gosh, I probably talked to 60, 70, 80 residents over the course of the year. People just don't usually make an appointment. Yeah. Yeah. So they just drop in. But Did you say that? I mean, I remember the number, but it seems like if you had that many meetings, you yeah, could Yeah, it says most interactions with the public on zoning are not held by scheduled appointments. They're just not. I, and I wasn't able to track it. I can't even track phone calls. You might say many. approximately. I mean, so oh gosh. council has an idea. Otherwise, well, it's... I did. I, I did for like uh, two months. I, I tracked phone calls, and it was like council's like, oh, please don't do that anymore. It's like a massive. I mean, because you know, you just get calls all the real realtors and people um, doing um, bank evaluations or want to know what the zoning district is and just general questions. It's just all the time. So, just yeah. So it seemed like quite a bit, and then we got a lot, you know, a lot going on. Uh, we've got um, stuff on the horizon with uh, Antioch College and um, um, legislation with small cell tower. And I think the transit guest lodging has been pretty much figured that all out, and have sent those. Most people have turned in their applications, like over 25. And um, overall, it was pretty good. So, I mean, this is something that um, has to go to council and be reported on at council. And Judy had suggested maybe that I just go ahead and do it since Matt would probably be the one that would do it. But I don't, I really wish he would come back and so we could say goodbye to him. Uh, yeah, I think it would be great if he came back. I mean, maybe Matt's we could get least favorite. Comment activity as chair was, was these. This? So <laughs> he's not going to come back to do this. I can tell you that <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see. When would that be? The second week of March? Um, I can tell you. I mean, I can just assign you a, a date if you tell me when you're back. Uh, it's pretty open. I'm just not going to be back for the first one. The Are, so we March Are we um Trying to move to Wednesdays? No. no okay. Yeah. You're, you're, you're set. Boo. Okay, so we got one more thing. Um, of union meetings. Agenda today. planning here. <laughs> In the Trying same to. building. So is I'm here twice. We need to have, a, and we'll, we'll make it a quick meeting, but we need to have another meeting in February. Okay. Um, and I'm wondering if we could have a February, Monday, February 26th. <laughs> Uh, we. Uh, yeah. I can't be here, but I can have we somebody can else have here, most likely. Okay. We. Yeah, we have. Can we uh, discuss that a little bit? Yes. Yeah. Um, so can you, up for the record, say what that application is, so that we can kind of ask you a couple questions. Off of the record. Is, is there a pending application? Or what do you yes. Mean? Well, I think it's a pending application. It's it's public. Yeah. It's on the record. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, a restaurant owner in town who is opening a second restaurant uh, down where the Mexican restaurant was. <clears throat> and um, there was, he thought that he was going under the conditional use permit that was existing. Uh, we tried to look into that to see if it was, you know, the previous owner's license, which it is being transferred in that case probably could have just been done that way. Um, but in fact, in further research, 
um, the previous owner had came to uh, the planner that we, we had from Greene County and he was only applying for a restaurant at that time so it was she gave it him a permitted use application a zoning permit he then had to have that put on the ballot and no one caught that to come back to have a conditional use I mean zoning and Department of Liquor are two different things you still should have come back for a conditional use but there I don't even know if there was anybody to do it what was the okay so when the citizens voted for the issuance of that wasn't that I mean where was that taken was it just filed well that's for the state it was filed with the Department of Liquor right or the Board of Elections yeah Board of Elections mm -hmm. yeah well, but our jurisdiction had it as a dry zoning issue. I mean, it was dry by land use. So if, in my mind, what I thought about was, okay, if, if that application got that, let's call it wet, mm -hmm. right? So that location is now wet mm -hmm. within the village. Mm -hmm. And why, how is the transference of a particular liquor license relevant to the land use acceptance of that still being a wet location. Because we never gave them a conditional use. If we never approved yeah. the conditional use. Okay, but it, it, okay. Does the vote trump that is is the question. Well, no, what I question is, is why are we punitive to someone who bought in thinking that I've got this established and now you're asking me to stop before, just before I open and go through a process. And what if during this process we get into a bailiwick with folks and citizens and they want to put it back on a ballot? We just lost a business. So I'm, you know, in my mind, it's, it's a land, it's attached to a piece of dirt. You know, it's attached to a property. Does it matter the name of who's on the liquor license? Wasn't there, was there a conditional use hearing at no. the original permit? That's, had the, there been, we wouldn't be having so this the, the answer is no, because it was a permitted use at mm -hmm. that time. There was no alcohol thing, sir. And then subsequently, the liquor license was approved by the, by the citizens, mm -hmm. and there was no conditional use approval at that time. Right. But there needed to be. But there needed to be. There needed to be under the code. So is it grandfathered in is kind of the question. No. The, is there anything different in the hours of operation at all? No. There's nothing no, different they, they, in the application at all. Even to the point of a, a building permit. He's not doing anything in, to the equipment. He's not, he may take the flower pots off the ceiling, but you know, <laughs> that's about it. Is there a, uh, is, is the date of the 26th available to people if, the, if there is a hearing that needs to be held? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then are you going to? Yes. I mean, you know, uh, this, this, uh, I mean, we're pushing this for him because this, you know, has to be noticed in the paper tomorrow. Letters have to go out by Wednesday, and a sign has to be put up by then too, in order to meet all the requirements. So, and it's our bad. We should have done what we didn't do. No, no, no he should have. No, no, in the past. No, no, the previous owner should have applied for a conditional yes. use. Correct. Right. It's well, not. It's not yeah. the village's responsibility to. Well, but we should have caught that. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, the person that we had at the time was a 10 hour a week hire out of Greene County. Yeah. Um, she was, you know, here maybe one day a week. Uh, well, I guess I'm, yeah, I don't know. The restaurant owner at the time didn't understand, I, get, I suppose, that he had to apply and we didn't catch it. Yeah. That there was a zoning issue. 
the, I guess, and I absolutely I agree with Ted, the only thing I think is, do you do um, any potential harm to the current owner if, in fact, he does not go through the process and legally dot those I's and cross those T's? And if, if this board is able to accommodate him and get that hearing in before he's supposed to open and, and, and he's on firm footing with regard to getting any kind of permit that he needs to, to get, I think he could make the case that he should be um, moved in. And I think the Planning Commission could also make that case. But what if a disgruntled neighbor decides that they want to raise an objection? And if you go through the process and legally put him through the process, um, he's above board in every way. And yeah, I think it's more likely that that vote gets revoked if we don't approve, you know, if we don't go through this process. I mean, can that vote even get re there, revoked? There's, in in, in theory, in a, in a broader sense, there's risks either way, but it seems to me that um, just because something, can you move was, your, um, just because something wasn't done properly the first time, um, we shouldn't overlook it the second time let's just do it the right way we've got the record um, and um, you know candidly I I don't think many people were objecting about the prior use and it's yeah. it's similar it's hard to think that there could be a significant public outcry that there's a, an issue there um, but I yeah. but is, is the solicitors uh, I would recommend that you go forward and have the conditional use hearing because I think it's important to do it the right way it's not, it's, we're not adding a new license, it's just a, he's just transferring. Oh yeah, we're cleaning up the paperwork, I understand that. I thought, you know, I mean, I'm shocked that the, um, the other owner didn't have, you know, his zoning permit in his conditional use. I mean, that's, yeah. when know, Denise I, mean, and I can I understand why it slipped through the cracks, but. Yeah. Yeah. When Denise and I spoke about this last week, um, and looking at the code, we determined that if it were truly just a, a, a change in ownership, all else was exactly the same, hours of operation, everything, that there wouldn't be a reason to do to have another conditional use hearing, simply issue the permit mm -hmm. uh, as a successor business, all things being equal. But I, again, I think in light of this, because the code is very clear when there's a liquor license involved, you got to at least have that threshold hearing on the conditional use, as you know. Yeah. Um, is there any blowback? Um, by the liquor control about that location and a new liquor license in that location and the voiding of the other liquor license? Not that we've heard. I mean, that, that's a, I mean that's, in my view, that's a transfer issue that, yeah. that we wouldn't get involved with. Mm -hmm. Now, in the context of what the liquor board m might look to, the only thing I don't think there's board, been any complaints yeah. about the Maybe operation. Maybe if they the didn't business. get a conditional use, I mean, they yeah. might. Have problems with well, the only the only communication I received from the liquor board was a question of was this property on uh, Zinni Avenue uh, incorporated into the village before 1933? <laughs> That's it. That's a safe question. Isn't yeah, it? That, that. Well, no, actually, that was a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> that part had not been annexed. I had yeah. looked on that. That wasn't annexed until the 1960s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, so it was like, I mean, yeah. it's usually easy to fill those out when it's downtown, but that one took uh -huh. a little more work. Yeah. Patty was like, I think I think you should be done working on this now. I'm like, I still haven't gotten a definitive answer. But yeah, then I finally did, so yeah. I think one of one of the things that, that the theories, as I think many of you are aware, is that when um, Patty made the recommendation that we bring in a, a three-quarter time zoning administrator, and now Denise is full time, it was to make sure that we would get a consistency and continuity. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that this is just a step in correcting some past lapses in practice. Yeah, I don't know how anyone could have done it for 10 hours a week. Oh, you yeah. can't. It just yeah. wasn't. I don't know how you were doing it three quarters. There's, I mean, well, yeah, I, I th I'm sure there were a lot of frustrated people yeah. uh, that didn't ever get what they needed. And probably oh, it, just went you know, and did I mean, something. I work in that venue. If, there's, if I can't get a hold of a zoning administrator for whatever purpose I'm trying to, that's always the first step. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's very frustrating. Yeah. It could put a, a project off for months. For months, right. You know, it's... 
That's true. So right. we've yeah. been agenda planning, correct? And uh, you, we, you have been. And uh, did I hear everyone say that they are in fact able to make yes. a meeting on the 26th? Yes. So that that will be the only thing on the agenda on the 26th. Okay. Won't be any of this other stuff. Um, so we need to uh, do nominations, correct? And in fact, nomination for, and I'm correct in that, right, Rose, that it's for both the chair and the vice chair? I don't understand how these nominations work, so I don't well, know. I could have sworn you were just nominated for vice chair. But I would agree with that. <laughs> That I've just been, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, this is the first meeting I've chaired. Susan it's been a while. Vice. Susan was vice chair mm -hmm. until when? Six months ago? That's why you're recent. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. That, that clears yes, that up. However, it is now 2018. Yes. <laughs> so we have to do both. Now that we've managed we've to get you into the vice chair board. seat, yes. <laughs> it, Commission. So the way you folks do these things according to your processes is the nominations come at one meeting and the vote is taken at the subsequent meeting. And so uh, to be correct in terms of your process, nominations should be made for both the chair and the vice chair at this meeting. You can do other stuff at your next meeting if you want to change things. I mean, there's no so is Matt ever coming back? No. no. Uh, he's, he's done. He's, he's retired. No, we're going to have to do something. <laughs> we're going to leave him at the brewery or yeah. something. Uh -huh. Go somewhere. Yes. Take him out to that lunch. That seems appropriate. Not too many of us. No, we can we not can talk about. Yet. Yeah. Yeah, we're okay. <laughs> well, do we have someone who's interested in the chair? That's what I was going to ask. Chair. Who wants it? You don't want Are to you attend? interested? I'm interested, I guess. This was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little scary. But Rose, it was the best meeting ever. Thank you. <laughs> I could do it again. Cool. Well, I'll nominate Rose. Yep. Thank you. One second. So who wants to be vice chair? Oh, sorry. I thought we could talk about both. Well, I was going to ask about Susan. You know, I mean, Susan's, it, Susan's been there. Susan is a snowbird, so she's gone part of the year. Yeah, and she uh, really didn't want to be vice chair, which is how I got to be vice chair. I see. Yeah. So there's Susan's to do. I will nominate you, Frank. I'll second. I was the second longest tenured member. <laughs> <laughs> You've been to how many meetings? Yeah. <laughs> Ready for your vote? Yeah. Okay. So, do you have to vote on the nomination? No, we don't. Vote. No, we don't. Vote, vote, on vote on that until the next time. I got you. Okay. You're nominated. All right. What is the rationale? Is there any? No. It's just the way the processes are. Really yeah. I think it maybe it gives you time to make little campaign signs. And yes. Does anyone else want to have cookies? <laughs> okay. Um, and maybe, I don't know. Nope, that's it. Maybe AJ yes. wants to be chair. No. Oh, um, and now I'm going, do we have to take a vote on adjourning? You just take a motion and a second. Okay, and say, I'm going to motion that we adjourn the meeting. Do I have a second? Yes, second. All in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Cool. Meeting adjourned. Okay, so. Great anyway, job over there, chair. I have these questions. And Rosa, I mean.